it has been a while sorry <laughs> a lot of stuff to do uh, but I have to organize a lot of stuff for uh, this again the time where the government is going to review us and um, we have been doing a bit of cloning and since I have to organize everything I said well let's make a video right away <laughs> and, uh, for my students in the future for me in the future and for you if you are interested um, part of the open science is that uh, you have to be able to share your code anytime and um, in order to do that I'm trying to find solutions for what we use in the lab every day like software solutions that are open source and that um, when we store it the information is always accessible of what we do uh, that means it stays in text files and um, yeah so since in the lab we're using python and r i decided to look for programs yeah that you can use in, in like libraries that you can use using either of both languages and we found a very nice one and it has been working I'm going to show you in this video the one that we use for cloning. Um, there's a lot in the background that is going on, um, how we organize it inside our computers and how everybody has to work with it. But I think it will be a way too long video and I think it's more important if you know that how, it's, how you can use this um, program, it's called PyDNA, it's made in, for Python. And I complemented with a plasmid maker, kind of like a map, plasmid map um, from R, a library called Plasmap R. The, yeah, I don't go too much in the in the R code, um, but yeah, that will be for another area. Or if you are interested, just let me know in the comments. Um, then maybe I can make a video. I just don't know how much you guys want to know of all this, and um, but I'm happy to. To help you um, start to transform your work into a more uh, fair um, data compatibility so yeah so this is the video if you have any questions the objective is um, to create a plasmid by simulating the cloning on the on the computer and make sure that um, we have a plasmid already with the sequence already done so that when we get the sequencing results we are able to um, check right away if it looks like it's supposed to look like um, of course this is a mini mini version for you to know how it works and this is what we use when we are learning a new program we do a mini version of everything um, so that we are able to see exactly what the program is doing each of the steps we can use our brain and our knowledge <laughs> to verify that the software is working as it's supposed to and that there are no little bugs that will kind of mess up our results at the end um, yeah so that's it so have fun okay here it comes To explain how we're using PyDNA. So what is PyDNA? PyDNA is a program created by Bjorn Johansson and um, it's in the GitHub. Um, it can be downloaded. We are trying to use it to do cloning and what is it recommended for? So let's look at it a little bit closer. Um, it says here it is used for simulation of primer design, PCR, restriction digestion, ligation, gel electrophoresis, homologous recombination, gypsum assembly, and in progress is the Golden Gate assembly. So I decided like, okay, let's give it a try. And we are using it to document our cloning. Now, let's look at it, how we are using it. Um, in order to be able to test, because we were having some problems with um, the simulations, 
I created a very, very tiny vector or a circular DNA or a plasmid, if you want to call it, um, that contains only 37 base pairs. And the most important thing is um, what the vector has, let's see if we can get it closer, is, um, so I have the sequence and I have in the five prime uh, region of the vector, I have an NED cut inside and on the other side of my insert or the hypothetical gene that I want to exchange, I have my XHO, XHO cut inside. And okay, so let's see. Now I, in my code, or you guys will find it if you have my code, uh, I have the requirements and um, those requirements, part of it is how we, the files are organized, in which directories, and what does it contain. But basically, what we have to start with is importing the packages. And base, I did this based on the documentation that uh, Bjorn published. There is a cookbook, and um, yeah, I just redoing it and tested with my tiny little uh, plasmid. Um, the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is this one, because you need to change these ones with the enzymes that you need. Uh, for many of our clonings, uh, we're using this the BAM H1, XHO, and NDE1, um, but right now we're, use, we're going to use only these two, the NED1 and XHO. Um, good, so let's look at the vector. Um, the vector is a, a, the format of the vector is a GB or gene bank uh, file. Um, how does it look like? Basically, basically you have a, these kind of characteristics defined in there and some features and the features are basically, so things that we label our plasmids, kind of like in which year area is the gene and all the stuff. So I here is from 9 to 15, I have the NED cut inside. From the 15 to 24, I have the gene A, which is my simulated gene. And uh, miscellany feature 25 to 31, which is my XHO, which is as well a cut inside. That's how a gene bank file for plasmids or for DNA looks like. Now I have to open it and read it so that the program can work with it uh, using the function read from the PyDNA, which is here. So from PyDNA readers, I import the function read. And I tell them it's not double-stranded DNA, it's false because I just saved only the single-stranded DNA uh, version. Um, Good, so I have it, everything saved. It gives sometimes an error, but I've seen that if I run it again, it won't be, doesn't make any difference. I still don't know what is this about. I have to maybe contact the, um, the person responsible for the program. But basically what it gives me is, I'm telling here, okay, just show me what vector is. What is the store in that variable? And in that variable is a store a object from the type sec record, and it has these attributes. So it has a sequence that we can access by calling the sequence, then an ID, which apparently doesn't have any, a name is exported, which we saw before, and what description I have, sim cloning vector, and this I have no idea what is that for. Okay, so here I just documented the error that sometimes comes up. Now we're going to do exactly the same for the insert. We load the insert. The difference is that the insert is in FASTA file. FASTA file is just the text, basically. Um, and I read it, and it has a different format, but it's basically text. And I tell him, okay, you just open and save, like read the insert FASTA as an object, as a sec record object, and it has these characteristics. We have the same uh, attributes or characteristics that we had for the vector. Then, yeah, so we have everything. Now, let's, let's digest it. 
um, and what is going to happen. So we have here, this is our vector, how it looks like. So it has, um, because it's linearized, so it's not circular, it will have this fragment, then it will have my NED cutting site, which is here. This is the sequence that is recognized by the NED. It's CAT, ATG. And then the gene, the hypothetical gene that I will be taking out. And the XHO, GC, so here, GTC, GAG. That's the cutting site. Now, you see here that this one shows... Um, in this graphic, I show where the cutting site is taking place because it leaves what is called the sticky ends. Those sticky ends um, are yeah, just hanging um, um, base pairs um, that are allowing kind of like to go back and put them together. But um, the same with the XHO. With the XHO, it's only one out of six. Um, that means that there will be kind of like five, no, four hanging ones, while in this one there are only two. And then we look at the vector. So when we digest the vector, um, to be able to digest it or to work with it, it has to be made a double-stranded. And that is only possible using the um, kind of like creating a, what is called a DSEC record. Um, and I use my vector, which is, has my sequence, and I tell them, okay, circular is false. But in theory, if I do a cloning, I will have a circular true. Yeah, so let's see what happens. So I tell him, okay, it's true. Mm, good, so I tell him that. Then I go and I said, okay, so cut the fragment. So if it's circular, it will have only two fragments because even though I cut in two areas, if you think that this part is a stick to this one, we will have only two fragments. Let's look at the circularized version, which we had here above. And we have here, exactly. So we have here the... If we cut with the NED and the XHO, we will have this fragment with the hanging um, uh, base pairs or the sticky ends and this fragment. So we will have two fragments. So, yeah, so here we are. Okay, so let's digest it. So we just said it's um, stored as a circular and they said we cut it and then it shows us it has two fragments. Now, the numbers here are the numbers of how many, how long the fragment is. And um, we look at um, the result of vector fragments is kind of like a list, I think it's, I think it's not a list, I think it's a sequence. Um, but yeah, you access it by using the index number. And if we want to access the first one, we just call the index zero. So let's see here. So it tells us it's not circular and the size is 18. It has an ID, it's a DNA, and this is how it's a DSEC um, with the length of, mine, uh, of 18. And if you count it, basically it's not really 18. It's like, yeah, 18 is the maximum value that you have. So we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then these four, so this 18. The program does that. No, I'm not sure why, but it does it. So I suppose it's the maximum length of the fragment. We do the same with the second one. Let's look at the second one. We have a 25. So if we think about it, the little one is the one that is kind of like my X gene, simulated gene, and then the rest is what is called the skeleton of the vector. Um, and, uh, or I call it the skeleton of the vector, and that has the hanging pieces, um, and my, so this is the NED, and this is the XHO, um, for some reason is upside down, in my opinion, but, okay, 
And then, yeah, we don't have a vector three. That's for the other version. So let's look at it. Good. So, um, yeah, so if it is like that, I can tell that my vector skeleton is my vector fragment one. Yeah, this is the this one. So the one with the index one. So the second of the list. Um, good. So I call it there, my vector skeleton. Let's verify that the vector fragments are what it's supposed to be. Yes, we have the two. Now we do exactly the same with the insert. We, uh, but the insert is a FASTA file and it's not circular. We know that it's a little fragment that we synthesize or something like that. Mm, and we tell it it's not circular. Then um, we add the feature, which I'm not going to add because I already added. <laughs> um, and then we have the insert is digested. And yeah, and then I tell him, okay, give me the first, so not the first one of the index, but the second one. And the reason for that is because when I do the digestion, um, let's see, insert digested, if I cut it, it gives me a sequence of digested fragments. So let's see here, insert digested. So let's ask us to show us insert digested. And when I look that, you see I have one with four because the hanging, these hanging base pairs that are removed by the cutting um, are recorded there. So I have to actually take is the, the one in the middle and that will be my digested fragment with the hanging uh, ends or the sticky ends. And that's what we see here. So this egg is here, that's my sequence and this, these are the fragments. So we have the hanging part of the NED and uh, the other part of the XHO. Yeah, so far so good, good. Now the question is, now we ligate it. And if you think about it, you have a circular kind of like in theory, a little bit open, but you want to put the gene inside that area. And the vector is kind of like circularized. I mean, it's the big part. So in theory, when we ligate it, it should go back and find the other ones. So um, yeah. That's what we thought. Uh, and when we did it that way, we had a little problem. And is, um, so we put our vector skeleton one and then insert the digested gene. Yeah, because that's what we need, we need to insert. Um, sadly, this is not what happened. So I linear, uh, we kind of really do this and then do the looped, meaning I close it to make it circularize. And it says here, oh, there is some problem here. There's a space here that he does not like. Yeah, so we have our NED site, that's good. Then our fragment that we inserted, then GTCGA, and on the other side should be the one that is missing, which will be the G. But if you see, it did not cannot really deal with the rounding thingy for some reason. So in order to do the cloning properly and not have mistakes, I strongly recommend you that you do it this way. So we go back to the vector and we tell the vector is not circular. And now we will have three fragments, which makes sense. Then we look at each of them just to make sure that everything is okay. And the third one, and basically what we're looking is, which one do we have to take as a fragment? And in this case, it will be the second one. So with the, win with the index one. Good. Then this one, since it's not circularized and it's not the way that we thought it will be, we're not using it. What you're using, um, just make sure that the vector fragments change. Yes. And uh, the insert. We did with the insert, we don't have to change anything because it's the same. 
we just need to go to the ligation. And now, instead of doing a vector skeleton one and the insert, we are doing it differently. We are just doing, um, we call in our clone is the vector fragments um, zero. So the first one of the vector plus the last one of the vector, because we knew that the one that we want to remove is the one in the middle, our gene or simulated gene A. And um, yeah, and then we added literally, so like the first fragment plus the insert digested plus the vector fragment, and they all have the sticky end, so they should recognize each other. And then we circularize the DNA. Don't ask me why, but that's how it's recommended in the cookbook. Until now, I haven't seen really a difference, but you never know. And we tried to do a lot of annotations. For some reason, did not work. I'm not going to try now. Um, I just want to show you here uh, all the different things that we tried in the first versions and that are more relevant for your work. And then we run this cell. And here we have, so we have our TTTT and the NED site, Oops, sorry, NED site. Then our inserted fragment, which is this one, and then our XHO site, and that's it. So when we look at it, we look at it here, and we save it, and we do a single unique cutter. So I can look that my fragments were still there, like my cutting sites, and that's true. Let's see if I can move my head. Mm, nope, I cannot, can I? Mm, I think I can, oh yes, I can. Um, yeah, so basically, you see here that we have the NED is still there and the exit show one side. In the other case, it will not have recognized that the exit show side was there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our cloning happened in silico. And now we want to create a map. And I created a R script that you will find in your folder um, where I use uh, a program called um, plus map R um, is in the description of the uh, Jupyter notebook. And basically what I'm giving it is um, I tell tell it to run the script called draw map, drawing map R and I give two arguments that the, the file needs. It needs to know where my clone file is. So the one that I just saved and how do I want to call it? Yeah, how I want the, the plasmid to be called. And yeah, and then when I do it, then it will say, um, it will run it and it says, if it says the answer is no zero, then it's all good. And we verify this. Um, yeah, and we have the map. Now the map looks quite unusual here is because it's so tiny. Um, so I use the plus mapper three, which is these guys. So you can place your uh, paste your plasmid, and it will find it will do the annotation if it finds something in, like something that is known. Mm, not everything is known, but yeah. And what I'm able to get is um, this little map, see, there we go. Um, what is this, my, the name of my plasmid, or my new plasmid, which I call it sim insert. And you see it's now 39 base pairs and it has my sequence, my insert. Now it's no more the gene that I had before, but it's A, G, 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 G with my NED site and my XHO site. And that's it. Until now, that's the way that we have been doing most of the uh, cloning. Um, to document everything and yeah, and I wanted you to know kind of like how we do it. Okay, so 
have fun cloning and yeah if you need the files or kind of like a demo just let me know and i try to post it in the git hub repository for the lab or i if you're part of my group then i will just give it to you i can send it to you as well but yeah just let me know in the comments okay have a nice day and until next time bye bye